Now here's a conversation and debate that is as old as Harley and Indian themselves. Which one of these companies is the best? And specifically, which one of these companies should you choose for your primary motorcycle brand? Now I know I deal with some hardcore people here that are locked in to each side. Some kind of merge in the middle, they like both, but mostly you will find the Harley people and Indian people are really locked in. It's almost like politics, right? Not quite as severe and obviously a lot more fun to talk about than politics, but people are dedicated to these two brands. So I know there will be one or two points that you strongly disagree or agree with. I'd love to hear those down below after the video. Just let me speak my piece on this and tell you where I'm coming from. And I'm gonna use five big metrics here that I'm basing my opinion on. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you simply which one I think is the best and why. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, full disclaimer, I ride a 2020 Harley Road Glide Special and I've owned a 19 Street Glide Special and an Iron 883. That was my first Harley. So you may be thinking off the bat, well, you are obviously going to be biased towards Harley. And to that, I would say you need to watch some more of my videos because I can see the faults in my own motorcycles in Harley Davidson. And I can also see the positive things and negative things that Indian does as well. So having owned three Harleys and never owned an Indian, now you may be thinking, well, dude, you don't know anything about Indian. So how can you speak on this? Well, that's the funny thing. I actually work with American Biker in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm independent of them, of course, and I do my own reviews, but I've ridden more Indians now at this point than I have Harley Davidson's. So I have pretty good experience with both companies. Now let's go ahead and get into the first one. This is dealer network. So there's no better way for me to say this than what gears and gadgets did on his channel, dude. He broke this down by state and looked at every Harley dealer that actually services motorcycles compared to Indian dealers. And so I would encourage you to watch that video, which I will link down below. If I for, happen to forget, which happens, just let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to link that for y'all. But regardless, when you look at the overlap between servicing Indian dealers and Harley dealers, there's really not as big of a gap as you may think there is. Unless you live in Alaska, and then in that case, you definitely want to buy a Harley Davidson. But regardless, Indian has strategically seem, seemingly put their motorcycle dealers where most people are going to be riding and not only riding, but year round riding as well. There are certain spots throughout the country where it may make more sense for you to buy a Harley if you're concerned with servicing. And obviously that will come up at some point. But for the most part, the dealer networks are pretty similar if we're talking about cross country trips and just getting basic service and stuff like that on your motorcycle. Plus, if you do your own work, you can simply buy parts online. Now, there is and has been shortages through Indian, so that is something to consider, but from what I know right now, obviously post-COVID now, what, three years post-COVID, uh, things are slowly starting to catch back up, and, and hopefully they will only get better from here you know, pending recessions and anything else. But simply speaking, dealer network, yes, there are way more Harley dealers, but at the same time, Indian has strategically put their dealerships in great spots. Again, I cannot explain this any better than that video I will share with y'all in the description box of this video. So that's not gonna help us in determining a winner, in my opinion. Let's move on to aftermarket. 
Now changing parts on motorcycles is just what you do. Whether it's a set of slip-ons, LED lighting, stage one, two, or three kits, changing out seats, handlebars, windshields, audio, whatever the case may be. Both of these companies have a huge aftermarket support, but there is no doubt that Harley wins in this area because consistently they've been around longer and companies have catered to that knowing that Harley is gonna be there. So the aftermarket support for everything almost is way better when it comes to Harley Davidson. Now, if you want common things like handlebars and lights and slip-ons and things like that, you're gonna be able to get parts for both. But if you wanna even go further with your aftermarket parts, Harley is the way to go. Now let's talk about the value part of this. So I could go through each one of the motorcycles and, and look at this price versus this price and what you get here versus there. And, and that would be probably an absolute nightmare. But what I do want to tell you is generally speaking, in my opinion, from what I've seen, you get a better value with Indian than you do Harley. For example, on their baggers, let's take a Dark Horse Challenger versus a Road Glide Special. Both of these bikes are blacked out. They both come with pretty premium features, although Indian treats their premium bikes better than Harley does. Okay, for example, you get a motorized windshield through Indian. You get a key fob. That is not just a freaking key fob that allows you to start the bike up, but it also allows you to lock your bike and unlock your bike. You gotta go up to the $43,000 CBO for, to get that through Harley. Actually this year, depending on when you watch this video, it's a $52,000 CBO is the only option right now. So there's that TPMS sensor. So that is included in the dark horse package specifically. And it's also included in their limited. Now, Harley Davidson offers that, but it's still an option for like $1,100 extra, right? Which is their RDRS. Well, Indian not only has a TPMS, but they have the Bosch six axis IMU, the cornering and ABS control and, and that entire package. If you're going to go up to a $28,000, $29,000 motorcycle, it comes with it. It's an option on Harley for $1,100 more. Now we cannot talk about these two motorcycles without talking about aesthetics. This is huge in motorcycling, man, because you know, you want your bike to look good, man. It's your baby, right? And aesthetic wise, overall, I think Harley gets the nod here. Where Indian gives you a better bang for your buck and a better value, Harley just has the line, every line, every tank, every fender, every saddlebag is almost perfect, dude. These bikes are absolutely stunning. And although Indian has come a long way, dude, from their old chieftains, especially the Roadmasters, all of that, they look so much better than what they used to. Harley just has, has had it dialed in for a very long time, and they definitely get the nod there as well. Also, you do get a different looking motorcycle depending on what you go with, right? So let's say a Road Glide Special with stretch bags is different than your ST. So you have the slam bagger look of the special compared to the performance bagger look of the ST compared to the functional Road Glide Limited. Obviously that has the tour pack and it's got the twin cooled 114 and you know, the lower fairings and all that kind of stuff too. So each bike looks very different or a Challenger Elite and a Challenger Dark Horse besides paint schemes and stuff and a few things here and there essentially they look the same. So you get more aesthetic differences depending on which Harley you actually choose. Is engines, performance, suspension, handling, that kind of stuff. Now, if you want the best ride on the road, like literally the most plush and best handling and best suspension, Indian wins hands down. The Fox shocks, man, I absolutely am a believer in that system, dude. And it, the, the, the Challengers and the Chieftains ride incredibly well and they handle really well. And then you had the Power Plus liquid cool motor, which I think is the most special motor that Indian makes. 128 horsepower and 122 foot pounds of torque. When they list the horsepower for an American Cruiser, 
you know you have something special because most of the time Harley does not list that. They'll list the torque specs, but not the horsepower. <laughs> so it's pretty funny, but that Power Plus motor is really special in my opinion. It's my favorite motor that Indian makes, plus the different ride modes. So, you know, your Challengers, your Chieftains, your Chief, Super Chief, whatever, you get ride modes that will change depending on the mood that you're in or the conditions of the road more features, more bang for your buck through Indian. And the last thing we'll talk about is the community. If you are looking to meet up with people on a group ride, if you're looking for events to go to, if you're looking to just hang out on a Saturday with a bunch of like-minded people that love motorcycles, Harley's going to be the network you want to go with. That's going to be the, the company you want to go with. Now, not to say that you have to own a Harley Davidson to go to these events, but it, it definitely adds to the experience a little bit. You know, I think the Harley community is wide. They, I mean, really, really wide. So if you want that community experience, if you want to be able to share ideas and talk about the same motorcycle with a lot of your friends, Harley is really a no-brainer. Again, that's where the history comes in, where you have the, the Indian that started in 1901 and then the disconnect and the buying and the selling, and now everybody likes to say, oh, it's Polaris, you know, and all that kind of stuff, where Harley all the way through has been Harley Davidson. So that's where they have the distinct advantage. Now, just because you own an Indian, like I said, doesn't mean that you can't hang out with people that ride Harleys. Just know you're going to get a lot of questions. Why'd you decide to go with that thing? <laughs> so having never owned an Indian, I want to tell you that I am impressed with their motorcycles. Will that change whenever I do eventually buy a Challenger specifically? It might. I got a private message just a couple of weeks ago about a guy that was excited about Challengers and excited about Indian until he bought one and he had a bad experience. And hopefully that's isolated to just him. I hate to say that, but you know, not everybody is going to have a good experience with Harley, you know? So it really just depends. People still say that Harleys leak a bunch of oil everywhere, you know? So there's that whole thing. But Regardless, man, as far as which one is the better company, all I can tell you at this point is my personal experience and the way that I've been treated. And that's really what I have to go off of because both motorcycles have their pros and their cons. I would personally go with Indian. Now, I've talked to people where they say their Indian dealers are terrible, but their Harley dealers are way more accommodating. Well, in my case, it's been the opposite. My Indian dealer is super accommodating, very awesome group of people. Whereas my Harley dealers, literally that I've checked out, which is four or five within a 200 mile radius, have like none of them have been super accommodating at all. And at times kind of rude, like they didn't even want me there. Uh, no negative press, no negative, you know what I mean? Like you can't say anything bad about Harley, even if you're just being honest in a review. So at that point, man, all I can tell you is from my experience right now, that's why I chose to buy my Harley from an Indian dealer. And that's probably why I will end up with a challenger at some time in the future. So there you go, man. There's my opinion. I'd love to hear what yours is down below. If you want to support what I do, you can do that through Patreon for a dollar a month. That's it or you could join the channel right here as well. Thank you guys, see you in the next one. And as always, hold them down.